totally. So you were trained in allopathic medicine. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. At what point did you decide to do integrative medicine? How did you get to a place of realizing that nutrition and exercise and the natural way was a really important thing to integrate into your practice? You see, I have a friend, Dr. Errol Bryce, who spent many years doing yes, my... Do you know him? I know Dr. Yes. Bryce, yes. He's my mentor. Oh, my... That is how I... He's doctor, a great mentor. Yes, Dr. Charles Marcel as well. So that is how, listening to these um, doctors, that I realized I needed to integrate lifestyle medicine in my practice. I have two, three offices, two traditional medical practices and then my lifestyle medicine practice. Ah, and so... How long has it been since you started doing lifestyle medicine? About uh, eight years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So have you found that you have kind of immersed yourself in it? Are you studying it all I the time? I am totally immersed. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time writing. I have a magazine, Get Healthy, with, that I publish every quarter. I'm on the radio, on TV locally, two TV stations discussing lifestyle medicine. The entire, all my patients, my colleagues know that Dr. Cooper emphasizes nutrition and exercise. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're gonna go to Dr. Cooper, be, be prepared. prepared. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's great. That's yes, great. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so in your daily practice, how do you introduce lifestyle to your patients? How does that how okay. does that happen? So usually my patients who are complex, those that are diabetics, mm. that are not controlled, those that are overweight, those that have chronic diseases, heart disease, I will discuss to them, are you willing to get off medication? Are you willing to use nutrition and exercise, stress management and spiritual renewal to improve your health? If they are ready for the change, then I introduce them. If they're not ready, it doesn't matter what I do or say, nothing will happen. I'll give you a story. Good. Couple, you know, one couple of weeks ago, a pharmaceutical rep walked into my office and he said to me, hey, Dr. Cooper, I lost 30 pounds. I said, how did you do that? He said, I picked up one of your magazine. That's where it began. And my three-year-old daughter's now asking for kale smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> I love to tell the joke. <laughs> That's good. And then a couple of weeks later, he came back. I'm now 50 pounds down. Wow. You see? So he was ready for the change. I did not speak to him. He read my magazine. Mm -hmm. So those patients were ready for the change. It happened. Another story, another patient walking. Hey, Dr. Cooper, I lost X amount of weight and I'm going to do surgery. What happened? Uh, well, sometime in the past, you discussed nutrition with me. And that's where it began. So those people who are ready for the change, it just happened. I think that is key. Mm -hmm. You can't make someone no. do. No. They have to be ready mm -hmm. and willing to do it. Right, to implement. To implement, right. to get started. You right. can motivate, mm -hmm. you can, you know, give them the rah-rah, mm -hmm. but until they're ready to do it, right. Nothing, it, nothing will happen. True. Nothing will happen. So you have found that through your magazine, mm -hmm. through TV, your practice, uh, uh -huh. what do you do for stress management? What do you with your patients? Uh, you mentioned stress. I management. I pray with my okay. patients. Ah, a lot of time they come in. I, I can assess. I don't pray with all my patients. Mm -hmm. I know when they need something beyond. Mm. So I pray with my patients. Mm -hmm. We have Bible studies in the wellness center. Nice. Right. Let's talk about that. So is the wellness center? kind of an evangelistic tool? Absolutely, that is the ministry. Okay. The ministry arm of my practice. Oh, I and love that it. is why I'm so happy. I mean, I, I'm totally focused on changing lives for today, but for eternity. That's right, you that's know? right. And you are in a great position mm -hmm. to do that mm -hmm. because as people, the health message of course is the Powerful. entering wedge. Yes. So as people get healthier, mm -hmm. 
they want to look to you for other guidance exactly. as well. Exactly. They trust you more. Mm -hmm. And patients will walk into their doctor, they'll open to the doctor. Right. I have patients who walk in and say, hey, doctor, can I speak with you? Okay, how can I help you? Can you pray for my grandson or my son mm -hmm. or my daughter that I don't know? Mm -hmm. So as a physician, nurses and healthcare providers, we are placed in a peculiar position to help people not only with their physical health but social and spiritual health That's and right. we need to understand this That's because right. we're placed here for a reason yes. the reason is to go tell preach and prepare for God's second coming and we must do so yeah, or else he's that. not going to come That's right I love I love the fact that you are looking at the whole person total person you're not just Im you're not just impacting health but you're acknowledging that true health is not just the physical no. aspect, but it's the emotional, the social, and the, the spiritual. spiritual. I take a holistic approach to health. Yes. Not all yes. my patients are open, 99.99%. Mm -hmm. I've never asked a prayer with a patient and, have, and the patient have said no, never. Really? Never. So you have that sense of for whom you should pray. Absolutely. And I believe the Holy Spirit gives oh, yes, you that. He got... let you know. Right. Pray for this one, mm -hmm. pray with that right. one. Right. I had a patient who came to me, new patient. She said, oh, I, I, I'm in your office because I, I've told that you pray with your patients. That's the only reason why she came to me. Wow. And unfortunately, one day she came, or another patient, and I, I didn't suggest a prayer. And she went out and she said, I almost came back because you didn't pray for me today. I said, why didn't you call me? <laughs> why didn't you just come back to the office? <laughs> <laughs> she wanted that prayer. She wanted that prayer. Yes. That was her medicine. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. I used to pray with my patients too in They're my powerful. office in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And um, it means something to Absolutely. them. Absolutely. It really does. It means a lot to them. So let's say someone comes to the Cooper Wellness Center. Mm -hmm. Where do you start with them? What What is the actual Program. process? Okay. So first of all, they have to have the desire for the change. And then at the Cooper Wellness Center, it's set up like a lifestyle center. So we have an educational room, a classroom, mm. where we discuss various topic and health. We have a gym, a full gym, with a, a coach there. Okay. Then we have a full teaching kitchen. So they go from the educational to the gym, then they're at the um, the kitchen where we're going to sit, discuss food as medicine, mm. do cooking demonstration, show them how they can change the way they eat using plant-based but healthy, nutritious, and delicious. <laughs> that is awesome. And you actually came here to 3ABN and did to some cook. cooking programs. Yes. Tell us some of the foods you cook. Okay, so we cook macaroni and cheese without the cheese, without right. the cholesterol, right. very tasty. Got you. We cook basmati seasoned brown rice. Mm. We made an ice cream that is was so delicious mm. without the cholesterol. Mm. We made Southwest black bean burger. Mm. Oh. You're making me hungry right now. <laughs> <laughs> we made a meatless meatball. It was just something else, the That's experience. So I think that when people find that you can have tasty, yes. healthy foods, mm -hmm. some, some health food tastes so bland, bland and ugh, that nobody, it's like, I don't want to eat like that. That's right. But if it can be tasty, mm -hmm. seasoned well, right. and similar, not so foreign, but exactly. you know, similar, mm -hmm. it can really be good. That's right. And so that's, you're teaching them how to, when they leave you, they can continue what you're teaching them because you're giving them the skills exactly. in the kitchen right. to continue that. Right. We're using food as medicine. Right. Some patient will walk in and they're hesitant to try the food mm. because it's not what they're accustomed right. to. Right. But after tasting the food, they want the recipe. They usually go with the recipe. Oh, I'm going to make that. Or they send me a message. Hey, I made this. It was delicious. <laughs> I have patients telling me, hey, I have my entire family on this plant-based nutrition. They don't even know what they're eating. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Oh, <laughs> because that's the so recipes good. are so delicious. Yes, yes. And they start to lose the weight. Oh, and lose the weight, improve their sugar, blood pressure. I had a gentleman who walked in my office recently. 
He has had hypertension for 30 years on medication. 30 years? 30 years. And he wanted to get off. So mm -hmm. he came to my office and asked me if he could get off the drug. I said, sure. Let us put you on a different lifestyle, not a diet. Now it's a lifestyle. And in four weeks, he got off his medication. After being on for all of those years? 30 years. My. So of course he changed his diet, he started mm -hmm. to exercise, manage his stress well, you know, pray, have good relationships, it's a whole many factors Absolutely. with this lifestyle changes. And I have so many more patients. A patient of mine, 70 years old, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, depression, just lost his wife. He was going in and out of the hospital 11 times in one year. Oh. I physically went to the emergency room and I said, Mr. So-and-so, I'm gonna get you out of this hospital. I want you to come to the Wellness and Disease Prevention Center. I'll put you in a program to keep you out of the hospital, to mm -hmm. decrease your medication so you can feel well again. Is going to involve changing the way you eat and exercise. He said to me, Dr. Cooper, I can't get from my bed to my chair. How am I going to exercise? I don't worry about it. We work something out. And believe me, he, he did so well that he got from the bed to the chair, chair to the walker, walker to the cane, and then without the cane. Come on. I'm I, and he was out of the hospital for many, many months. He did so well. Look at God. God is wonderful. If we use the natural remedies and the mm -hmm. things that he's given us, sure. we can get well. Absolutely. So what a blessing that sure. is. What a I blessing. must emphasize that there are many places for medication. Not all you know, patients right. will be off medication. Right. So I practice traditional medicines. So patients who don't want to change lifestyle, they're on drugs. Right. Patients who can get off all of their um, hypertensive medication, then they're in some, you see? So, um, you know, there are different levels. And I think it's important mm -hmm. to acknowledge that. I think it's important to state that we are not telling you to get off Absolutely of your medication. Absolutely not. <laughs> do not do that. We're not telling you to do mm -hmm. that. What we're saying is that through natural means and under the supervision of a physician like Dr. Cooper Docker here, um, it can happen. Right. By the grace of God, it can happen. But we're not saying just stop taking your no. medication and do the natural thing because that's, that's irresponsible if you've been on medication for years and years right. and years and you just up and, and right. that's not what the doctor said. No, no. So, and I think that's a very important point because some people will misunderstand. No, I'm and not saying that at all. Get off and no. not take I'm it. I'm saying there's hope. That's right. Studies have shown that the number one risk factor for chronic diseases, mm -hmm. it's the food you eat. I almost spoke in Spanish, but it's the food you eat. <laughs> Therefore, if food is a problem, if food is the cause of your problem, then how do you treat it? With food. With food, exactly. Right. But I think all too often we don't make the connection mm -hmm. between nutrition and disease exactly. status. We just don't. Mm -hmm. And we and we want to eat what we want to eat. Come right. on, you know. Mm -hmm. You know. You want to eat what you want to eat. That's and true. so, but if you can find foods that kind of satisfy that taste craving that you have mm -hmm. as well as it Being makes you healthy. That's right, why not? It's a win-win. Exactly. It's a win-win. Right, so right now my emphasis is teaching patients to use healthier food. Eat more of the good stuff. Mm. Eat more of the food that gives you vitamins and antioxidants, the nutrients and iron. And eat less of the things that give you cholesterol and sugar and heart disease. Because it's very hard for patients to really change the way they eat. Yes. They must be realistic. Absolutely. Th things are culturally determined. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, so th you, you just, said that you made macaroni and cheese. Oh, absolutely. That's a cultural mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. and, and in many American households and in black community right. too. Mac and cheese, that's a big deal. But you made a different a kind. A healthier kind. That's right. We made meatballs, a healthier kind. Right, right. And mm -hmm. what you're doing now is you're establishing health principles. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, okay, Instead of eating this way, why don't we try it this way? 
do this. Mm -hmm. Do the healthier thing. Exactly. Do something. Do eat food, not prepackaged, right. processed right. things, but food that's going to nourish with vitamins and minerals. Iron and all this. Yeah. Eat yeah. food not too much and mostly plant. One of my uh, colleagues said that. Mm -hmm. So you must eat food. Don't overeat, mm -hmm. but mostly plant. Mm -hmm. If the patients or if we can understand that in general, we'll have healthier people, healthier families, healthier community, and a healthier nation. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. And so McAllen was the, the obesity capital? Yes, of America in 2011. Wow. And we did well. We dropped into about number four. Mm. And then this year, we went back up. Really? So we have to work harder and harder. And because we're so fat in, in McAllen, we have young people with, obe with diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, 12, nine years Aww. old. So it shows that if we as healthcare provider don't empower and teach, patients want to learn how to stay healthier. Right. They don't have the information. We have to empower them by giving them information so they can make informed decision on health, and that's how we're going to change your healthcare destiny here. Absolutely. If you know better, you can do better. Absolutely. If you don't know better, how are you going to do better? Right, right. So that's great. So were you always a Christian? No, what? no. I became a Seventh-day Adventist at age 12 ah. after being enrolled in one of her Seventh-day Adventist schools. Oh. My grandparents, they were Baptists, and I had a hard time. I actually was asked to leave the house at age 12 because I became a Seventh-day Adventist. Really? Did they think it was a cult? Not a cult, but they didn't like the religion. You worship on Saturday, you don't eat this, don't eat that, and so forth. And they asked you to leave? Yes, my grandfather asked me to leave, but my grandmother asked me to stay. So I remained there, and do you know what happened? Mm. Guess what happened? What? I've never even discussed the message with them, but they died Seventh-day Adventists oh. just because of the example. Praise the Lord. So they saw how you They live. saw the difference, they saw how I live, and so forth. My sister now is a Seventh-day Adventist. Really? So I really believe in living, evangel-living. Mm. That is the most powerful way of reaching family members or friends. Just living the lifestyle. Evangel-living. I living. love that. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good term. I'll give you credit for it, but I love it. <laughs> I might have to use it, but I love it. Evangelism, Living. and that's, you're, you're reaching out through example, mm -hmm. and that is really And did I tell you that from my wellness center, we have had five baptisms? Really? Yeah, so we are Praise the Lord. evangelizing right there in the wellness center. Praise the Lord. I really believe that as Seventh-day Adventist physician, nurses, whatever, teachers, we must tell others about him. Yes. Find a way to preach the gospel yes. so that God could come and come soon. I enjoy using health. We know that health is the open door or health message. That's right. And we need to use it as healthcare providers to reach others. Absolutely. That's what we're doing right there in South Texas. That's wonderful. You have a website? Yes, I have a website. We'll put that website mm -hmm. up for you and people can contact you right. if anybody's in that vicinity or if anybody... Worldwide, any, worldwide too. I have wonderful. online courses. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so I can be reached anywhere. So if they're in Texas, I'm there at the Wellness Center. If they're anywhere in the world, I can reach them through my courses. That's incredible. You're doing a great work. And you've traveled. I've traveled, yeah, all the world. Oh, wow. Just got back from uh, Africa. I go to Africa frequently, well, twice. And the last trip, we baptized over 300 people, reached 3,000 patients, had 100 eye surgery. God is wonderful. Look at, look at how you're using your gifts. Yes, yes. God has given you so many gifts and you're using them to his glory. That's right. And that, that's what it's all about. That's right. Oh, just in 20 seconds, what would you tell a patient right now who's battling with chronic disease? There is hope. Hope is there. You don't have to be on all these drugs. Find someone, find your doctor, find my website. We can lead you on how to change lifestyle, become healthier, use less medication, and you can do well. 
Oh, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Uh, thank you for having what me. What a blessing to have you. Thank, thank you, you so much. We really appreciate all that you're doing in the community to make a difference. It's so important to use our gifts for God. And as you've seen, Dr. Cooper Dockery is doing just that. Well, we've reached another end of another program. I can't believe it. The time went by so fast. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you join us next time because you know what? It just wouldn't be the same without you. Dr. Donna Cooper invites you to connect with us. Like us and share our social media networks. You can watch repeat programs of our shows anytime on Vimeo. Find us on our website at drdonnacooper.com. Well, welcome Facebook friends. We are starting a little bit late, but I have a fantastic show for you. You know, last week we discussed fatty liver, one of the leading causes of liver cirrhosis here in the United States and other parts of the world. We had a lot of viewers. Thank you so much for joining us. And today we have a very interesting topic. It's high blood pressure. High blood pressure is known as the silent killer. Why is it the silent killer? because usually there are really no symptoms. In the United States, we have about 100 million people with high blood pressure. Maybe you're one of them. So I'm very glad that you have stopped by to listen and to interact with us today. I'm Dr. Cooper Dockery, I'm board certified in internal medicine. I have been practicing medicine for about 27 years. Over the last several years, I have changed the way I practice medicine to be more holistic, to be more inclusive using lifestyle modifications. And I've seen so many of my patients who are doing so well. Some have decreased blood pressure medications. Some have gotten off medications altogether. So today I have one of those persons here today, Mr. Freddie Peralta. He was diagnosed with high blood pressure probably over 30 years. And then he came to Cooper Wellness Center, joined the program, and he is doing very well. So I want you to share and like our program, share, make comments and like. And I want you to stay, don't go away because there's so much for you to learn. So let's Welcome you again to Get Health with Dr. Cooper. And at this time, listen to the story of Pe um, Freddy Peralta. We're Foodamed, a great restaurant with a healthy style, serving the best food and 100% vegan. Each dish with an exquisite and unique flavor. Bring the family, enjoy and eat healthy. The best in food prepared by our chef and highly qualified staff. We're available, consider us for your next event. All in one convenient location. Foodamed. All our food is plant-based with a variety of dishes. A wonderful variety and mmm, mmm, delicious. Yes, food is medicine. Foodamed. 6401 North 10th, McAllen. 956-731-4484.
Hola, mi nombre es Freddy Peralta y quiero compartir con todos ustedes una experiencia muy propia y muy beneficiosa desde el punto de vista de la salud. Por cerca de 30 años yo estuve tomando pastilla para la presión, la única pastilla que he tomado en mi vida. Y este año decidí hacer un cambio en mi vida y eliminar esa pastilla. Los resultados han sido sorprendentes. En menos de cuatro meses yo soy una persona libre de toda, de toda pastilla. Ya no tomo ninguna pastilla para la presión. ¿Cuál ha sido el secreto? El secreto está aquí al alcance de todos. Ha sido el programa con la doctora Cooper en el Centro de Nutrición y Prevención en donde fundamentalmente hay que hacer cambios en la alimentación, en el ejercicio, en el descanso, en la manera de vivir. ¿Algo mágico? No, no lo es, es algo simple, solamente hay que hacer un cambio. ¿Cuáles han sido los cambios que hemos hecho? El cambio en una alimentación fundamentalmente basada en planta, hacer un estilo de vida saludable, hacer eh, una, eh, una educación constante, que es lo que hemos, particularmente yo he recibido aquí, o sea, ¿cuál, ¿qué es una visita para mí en, en, en la clínica? Primero, educación, signos vitales. La educación significa una conferencia de un médico especializado en donde habla de nutrición. Luego, los signos vitales de la enfermera. Luego pasamos a la alimentación, en donde hay clases sobre alimentación a cargo de un chef supervisado por una doctora. Y finalmente, ver una evaluación médica. Todos estos elementos, educación, nutrición, signos vitales, Uh, la guía de un médico ha hecho posible que en cuatro meses yo he cambiado lo que fue 30 años de mi vida cero pastillas, ninguna pastilla para la presión la, la presión yo me la tomo tres veces al día sorprendente, nunca he estado mejor lo logré yo, todo el mundo lo puede lograr es algo simple, es algo no complicado solamente significa hacer un cambio de estilo en su vida gracias Welcome back. I'm Dr. Cooper Dockery, and you're watching Get Health with Dr. Cooper. Our topic today is high blood pressure. How can you stop it? How do you know if you have the disease? And you just listen to the story of Freddy Peralta. Very successful, got off medication, and he's here in the studio with us today. So, Freddy, why don't you join me? Pase, Freddy. Qué bien, qué bien. Bienvenido, Freddy. Gracias, doctora. Vamos Gracias. a sentarnos un tantito para hablar. Ok, perfecto. Ok. Freddy, bienvenido. Welcome to Get Health with Dr. Cooper. Now, we're going to be in and out of the language. Freddy speaks mostly Spanish, so we're going to be bilingual today. Wonderful. So, welcome, Freddy. And you have a very intriguing story. You tell us about your, your story. When were you diagnosed with high blood pressure? Háblanos. Ok. Uh, gracias, doctora, por la invitación. Qué bueno poder compartir, you know. Thank you, doctor, the for the story invitation. With everyone over here. Very good. And also, you know, I need to correct something that, you know, I, I, I did on the first video, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk about, I, you know, I put away my medicine in four months. Right. Actually, it was in only four weeks. Four weeks, yeah. right? So <laughs> you got off the medication yeah. in four weeks, four weeks, not four months. Yes. Correct. All right. So that's clarified. All yeah. right, Freddie. Talk a little bit about when were you diagnosed with high blood pressure? I think it was about 30, 31 years mm -hmm. ago. You know, the, maybe that day I went with my blood pressure was high, and then mm -hmm. the doctor decided, you know, to put on medicines. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, I was doing that for three decades, you know, 31 years, mm -hmm. that's a lot of time of my life, you know, half of my life it was taking medicine. Right. Then, um, you know, at the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. you know, I decided to do some change on my uh, lifestyle. I said, wow, why, you know, I would like to, to put away my medication, medications, you know, mm -hmm. the only bill, uh, the only pill that I take, you know, I don't want to take anymore. Right. Y cuando hice esa decisión, la, vine a consultarla a usted. Usted me dio la, la idea de cómo hacerlo, you know. So when I made the decision, I came to, to Dr. Cooper and she told me how to do it. Honestamente, yo estaba incrédulo. Honestly, I was doubtful, right? Correct. Uh -huh. You know, you know I, I, because everyone told you, you know, as soon as you start taking medicines for blood pressure, it's going to be for life. Mm -hmm. But that is a life. You, that is a not life. Not true. That's not true. You know, you can change that. Right. And then, you know, after I talk to you, you, you know, you say, okay, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to reduce 
Uh -huh. And then after that, we are going to start a program. Right. You know, that program, you know, changed my life. Right. Actually, let me tell you this. When I summarize everything mm -hmm. that I did, mm -hmm. I say I did this in 20 hours. 20 hours. Are yes. you sure about that, Freddie? Yes. That's about a day, less than a day. Let me tell you this. All right, go ahead. I came to the center uh -huh. twice a week. Right. It was four hours a week. Mm-hmm. Just say five hours a week. You know? Okay. And for four weeks, if you uh, do the number, actually you are taking about 20 hours in a month. That's right. Got yeah. you. Now yeah. I understand. So, I mean, everything needs more time to change. But right. in 20 hours in a month, you can get the idea how to do it. That's right. You know, as soon as you get the idea how to change your lifestyle, in 20 hours or less, then everything's gonna be easy. I wonder if people are understanding this. Freddie's saying that here at Cooper Wellness Center, he started the program, the 12 Weeks to Wellness program, in which he came twice a week, about two to four hours a day, because the program is a little extensive. And within 24 hours, that's about for weeks, Freddie was able to get off his medication. Now, I know that there are a lot of people thinking and wondering, so what is this program? What did you do? Okay, Freddie, what did you change? Let's talk to the viewers. What did you change? Um, the first thing I changed, it was the perception about everything, mm -hmm. you know, education. You right. Know. The program started with a classes, mm -hmm. you know, when they tell you about how to sleep, right. how to breathe, That's right. how to exercise, mm -hmm. how to choose food. From there, you, you go to exercise. That's right. The exercise, you know, focus on, on your problem. Mm -hmm. And from there, you go for the cooking classes. Right. So when you have education, when you have exercise, when you have the right food, you are on the right path. path. To, to better health. To better health. Right, because studies have shown that the number one risk factor for chronic disease, it's the food that one consumes. And that is why we focus a lot here on food as medicine. And during this program, we're going to continue to discuss what are some of the foods that you need to consume if you're high, if you have high blood pressure. What are some of the foods you need to consume to lower your blood pressure and possibly become like Freddie by getting off drugs. Correct. All right, Freddie. So you're saying that you start to sleep better, maybe a little longer, right? Yes. And um, you start to exercise. Correct. All right. So how does sleep affect one's blood pressure? Now, we all know also that adequate sleep is medicine. When one is stressed and when one doesn't, you know, get adequate sleep, then there's certain hormones that are elevated that could increase the blood pressure. We'll talk about that later. So Freddie, how are you doing right now? I am doing, uh, you know, I feel so blessed, mm -hmm. you know, because, uh, you know, when I, when, when you, when I, when I see you on February the 7th mm -hmm. and you told me that morning, you don't need blood pressure anymore blood you know, pressure medication medication anymore <laughs> you were very doubtful i must say fred you did not believe me am i right correct and then you kept coming back asking me doc are you sure i've been checking my blood pressure and after trying it for a couple of days then you became more convinced convinced and then you started to actually just drop the medication correct now go ahead freddie yes um you know, usually when you when you, when you do a change mm -hmm. in your life, you know, something that you did every day for 31 years and all of a sudden something changed, you know, you think that you are dreaming. Yes, it's, yes. it's difficult. It's yeah. difficult. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I, I was so afraid about, you know, something could happen to me, you know. <laughs> You're going to have a stroke, <laughs> right? Yeah, correct. <laughs> but then, you know, when I went to the summit, Mm -hmm. That's the health summit the we health had summit recently. Is, uh, in April, April the 11th. Right. And one of the doctor, Dr. Santana, Santana. from Dallas, mm -hmm. talked about the hypertension mm -hmm. and recommend a book, 30 Days Without 
love pressure, something like that. Yeah. So I started reading the book and then I was absolutely 100%. You won over, you got, you were that, convinced. You, yes, that right. I, I was on the right path. So good, no good. doubt in my life anymore. Very good. So if you're watching us there now, remember that if you're diagnosed with high blood pressure, now there are different causes for high blood pressure. So you have to sit with your doctor, see what's the real cause. But if you have essential hypertension, not secondary, then you don't really have to live the rest of your life on medication or on so many drugs. You can work along with your doctor. You can try and find me. My page will be there. You can find me, get information on how you can get off medication. I have three books on the market, 14 Days to Amazing Health, um, Get Healthy for Life. In these books, you will find information on how to change your lifestyle and therefore get off medication like Mr. Peralta here. Freddie, what is your usual day like? Give me a typical day. What do you have for breakfast, for lunch, and maybe supper? Well, you know, you know, I am Dominican, you know, I am from the Caribbean, so we eat very different. You know, we don't eat tortilla, you know, we'd like to eat something else. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I wake up in the morning, you know, 6 a.m., I usually do some reading, you know, mm -hmm. pray. Because, right. You know, without prayer, you don't get anything. Meditation is very important mm -hmm. for good health. Correct. Mm -hmm. You know, after that, you know, I, I do, you know, drink my water, you know. And yes. Very good. And that, it's a, that food, you know, is fantastic. You know, hay un error. La gente cree. People believe que la comida saludable es mala. that healthy food is bad or it's doesn't bad. taste doesn't well. Taste good. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. That is incorrect. Es incorrecto. Mm -hmm. La comida saludable que se prepara aquí es más deliciosa que la muy mala que hace en otra parte. So did you hear that? The healthy food that we prepare here, it's very, very delicious. You know what, Freddie? I know you have a lot to say. We're going to take a break and we're going to return to talk about hypertension which is a silent killer. Let's go for a break. Now it's our turn to take care of those who saw and helped us grow. Their time is valuable. It is time to think of a professional staff who will help take care of them. We at Palimed Hospice and Palliative Care are the right choice. Our staff and 24-7 services are trusted and reliable. Call us. We are the solution you and your family need. We understand you. We are Palimed Hospice and Palliative Care. Dr. Donna Cooper invites you to connect with us. Like us and share our social media networks. You can watch repeat programs of our shows anytime on Vimeo. Find us on our website at drdonnacooper.com. Okay. All right, so I want to welcome you for joining us. I have Jerry Tamayo from the Philippines watching. Marvin, welcome. And Beverly Anderson, Edgar, our chef, is watching. Please like and share the page. We want more people to be watching us. So if you're on the page, please share. We're discussing hypertension, the silent killer. And you have just heard the story of Freddie. Freddie had high blood pressure for 30 years. He was on medication. He came in, changed his lifestyle, and his blood pressure is now normal off medication. As I mentioned earlier, there are about 100 million people living in the United States with high blood pressure. What is high blood pressure? Have you checked your blood pressure recently? You probably have not. Now, remember I said high blood pressure is a silent killer. So you could have high blood pressure and don't even know it. What is high blood pressure? Now, if you were to go to a local pharmacy or if you were to buy the machine and check your blood pressure, then a normal blood pressure would be anything below 139 over 89. I'm going to clarify. That could be normal or 
if you have from 120 to 139 over 89, then you could be prehypertensive. So what blood pressure do you want to have? You want to have a blood pressure at about 120 or below over 70, 80. Now, if your blood pressure is less than 90 over 60, then that might be low if you're on medication. So why do we call high blood pressure silent killer? Now, high blood pressure can lead to many complications. One of the most common complications is a uh, stroke, what we call a hemorrhagic stroke. The blood pressure, the blood vessel will rupture and therefore there might be bleeding in the brain and then that could cause a stroke. There are other complications, cardiovascular diseases, renal failure, problem with the vision, these are complications from high blood pressure. Now, you might be wondering, sometimes I have a headache, could I be having hypertension? If you're having headache as a result of high blood pressure, that means the blood pressure is severely high because usually there are no real symptoms for high blood pressure. Now, how do we get pressure anyway? You know, for you to be alive, you need to have pressure, pressure in the, in the vessels. How do you then, how do you produce pressure? Now, the heart is the pump that pumps blood. Now, when the heart pumps, then there is a pressure that is produced. That pressure is called the systolic pressure. That's the pressure at the top. When the heart relaxes, then that pressure is the diastolic pressure. That's the bottom number. So we want to have a pressure, a blood pressure between 120 over 80 or so, and that is comfortable. I'm going to move over here to my heart, and we're going to discuss something here. Let me just walk with me here. All righty. So this is the main pump in the body. Now, of course, this morning I call around to some hospital and I said, um, can you connect me to the intensive care unit? And uh, the nurse came on and I said, I am in need of a heart. And there was silence on the phone. And I said, okay, the heart you give to the patient after the open heart surgery. So I have a heart here for you and you know exactly where to find that heart. It's in the center of the chest, slightly to the left. And if you see here, the heart has many chambers, four chambers, but we're going to talk about the left chamber here. This is the left ventricle. This is the right ventricle. Now, when the heart works, what happened? The heart here is a pump, and when it contracts, then blood is pushed out to the rest of the body. So we're going to push our blood out here. So here we go. We're pushing the blood out, and this is the blood vessel and the blood pressure is measured here. Now, if, the, if this vessel is very stiff, all right, let me go to the back here. If this is very stiff, then the pressure here will be increased. So this then should be flexible. We should be able to dilate this or else the patient is gonna have high blood pressure. Alrighty, now what happened during a stroke? I am gonna tell you what happened? So this is what happened. Let me see if I can get some bleeding to happen here. So then we have the heart, the, the blood vessel here. The pressure here is very, very high. So what happened is that the wall here becomes thin and then it ruptures easily. Let's see if we could get some something happening here. So I'm going to rupture that. We're going to try to pump some blood through. Let's see what happens here. Let me see. All right. So my experiment is not working very well. But what happened here is that the blood will leak out into. Let's see if we can get some action here. The blood is going to leak out into the tissue in the brain. So you're going to have some bleeding occurring. And then that is could be a massive stroke. Patient's going to become unconscious probably. Patient might have some weakness someplace. And this is one of the complications for high blood pressure. So if you don't know your blood pressure, 
then you need to see your doctor or just go to the local pharmacy and ask to get your blood pressure checked. I'm going to be right back and I'll probably repeat this experiment. So don't go away. I'll be right back with more on high blood pressure. Welcome back to Get Healthy with Dr. Cooper. As you know, the aim of this show is to educate you on how to use natural remedies for good health, exercise, nutrition, stress management, water, and the sun. Today, we are in our Living Active segment, and we have something very special for you. Ramsey, welcome. Tell us what you have Thank for you, us. Thank you, Dr. Cooper. Thank you for having me. Uh, what we're gonna have is aquatic exercise. Uh, this benefits elderly, this benefits uh, the obese population, also diabetics, and also a good way to start to exercise. If, you've never, if you haven't been in active lately, yeah, it's a great step to get going, uh, get everything going. So what we're gonna start with is an A skip. We're gonna come here straight forward, nice and simple. This is a simple demonstration. This is the advanced demonstration right here. So the advanced demonstration is just gonna have that knee come up a lot faster and thrust it way up, boom. Boom, each time, they're gonna be coming down and back, down and back, same thing, boom. Nice and controlled, nice and controlled, there you go. And we notice how the advance is bringing that knee high, making that water splash. Don't be worried, it's just, just we're getting that work done. Now here we're focusing on the ligament, activating coming up and down, okay? So now we're gonna do the B skip out. The B skip out is just gonna pertain to you're pretty much kind of like kicking the door down, kicking the door down, nice and controlled. The, the basic portion is just gonna do it as you can, nice and controlled, the way she kicks out, focus on that knee driving up. Now in the advanced section, now she's gonna do it with a little bit more arm movement and a little bit more oomph behind the kick. Now she's really kicking the door down. Bam, bam, there you go. Get it done, get it done. There you go, there you go, good job. Notice how the advance is really thrusting, thrusting that knee up, thrusting that knee high. Good job, good job, good job. Now what we're gonna get into is the high knees, slow and high knees fast. Here in this segment, I want the basic just to go nice and controlled. Now pick it up, a little bit faster, a little bit faster, 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 pick it up. Do as much as you can. Now the advanced section, we're gonna distinguish the big difference on the speed. Slow and fast. Let's go, let's go. Nice and slow, nice and controlled, nice and controlled. All right, now pick it up. Boom, 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 slow. Nice, 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 fast. Pick it up, boom, 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 boom. Now she's gonna bring it back the same way, doing the same thing. Let's go. Bring it back, bring it back. Boom. Fast, 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 slow. There you go. Fast, 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 fast. Finish it, finish it. Slow. Good job. Good job. Hey, they are working. Don't believe it. Believe it or not, they are working. All right, so now we're going to go into the side step, right? The side step, the basic, we just want you to go just walking sideways and involve the core. Start working that side leg muscle and just nice and controlled. Open yourself up. Don't be uh, making small steps. Make big steps, big wide steps. Over here in the advanced portion, we're gonna stay low. We're gonna stay low and open up, boom. Open up, there you go, stay low, stay low, stay low. Now you notice how the, how the basic is just coming nice and smooth, nice and smooth, good job. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Stay low, stay low, stay low, stay low, stay low, stay low. There you go, there you go. Good job, good job. Now what we're gonna do is walk backwards. Walk backwards, the basic walk, that's all we're gonna do. Just basically walk backwards, try to get, try to give a little bit more speed on it, go a little bit faster, try to create the tempo a little bit faster so you activate more of that hamstring, okay? Now the advanced portion, she's gonna drop her hips and keep, her low, keep herself low and come a little bit fast. Let's go, boom. Quick, 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 quick. There you go, there you go. Work those arms, work those arms. Good job, good job. Now bring it back, bring it back. Nice, 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 nice. Good job, good job. What I love about this exercise, uh, just working in the water in general, we have a lot less pressure on our joints. 
Uh, we have a lot less uh, injury prone. We're you know, gonna take care of our ligaments, working them all the way up, working them all the way down. On this one, we're gonna do a squat. All we're gonna do is a squat, jump, just squatting, jumping straight up. On the, on the basic portion, do what you can. This is, you know, um, in regard of a heavy set person, diabetic person, or anything in that regard. Just do it nice and controlled, as high as you can go. Push it, push it. Try to push yourself if you can. And in the advanced portion, this is where we're gonna notice that big difference. I want her to explode up, bring your knees high, and go up, boom. There you go, straight up, boom, boom. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Nice and controlled, there you go. There you go, there you go, there you go. Let's just wait for right here. Come on, bring it back, bring it back. We're almost done, almost done. Let's go, let's go. You will get water splashed in your face. So if you can do uh, the advanced portion, make sure to bring goggles or have some glasses handy. They will help out so you don't get that splash in your, in your face. Come on in, Dr. Cooper. I hope you like this segment. Wow, Randy, I just love this segment. Now you are there. If you're elderly, if you're overweight, you're disabled, this is the exercise for you. Randy, thank you so much. And we'll see you again soon. Guys, so we had some technical difficulties and we had to take a break and now we're back in. Um, I have here with me Freddie Peralta. Freddie had high blood pressure for 30 years and he changed his lifestyle and therefore he got off the medication. Now, we just showed you an exercise segment. We spoke a little bit about food and I want to just remind you that high blood pressure is one of the leading causes of heart failure death, stroke, and renal failure in this country. We have 100 million people with high blood pressure in the United States, 100 million. It is called the silent killer for a reason, because usually there are absolutely no symptoms, no headache, no dizziness, usually unless the blood pressure is urgently high severely high. So therefore, I recommend that if you have not checked your blood pressure recently, then go and see your doctor or go to the pharmacy and have your blood pressure checked. Now, what is high blood pressure? Any reading above 139 over 90 can be regarded as high blood pressure. We have different stages of high blood pressure. If you're 121 to 139, over 89, then that is prehypertension. So you need to have your blood pressure less than 120 over 80 if you want to be on the safe side. For me, my blood pressure is usually 110, 115 or so over 80 or 70. Now, many years ago, I was 25 pounds heavier and my blood pressure was in the prehypertensive uh, section. But I changed my lifestyle as well and my blood pressure now is very, very normal. Now, I want to take the time to welcome some of the people joining us. I saw um, some of my cousins from England, the Hogs. I've seen quite a few people here in the Valley and all over the country. I want to welcome you. Remember, you're watching Get Health with Dr. Cooper. Now, Freddie, you might want to recap because we were off the air for a little bit. Tell the new viewers. Okay, a pesar de que salimos del aire, la presión mía se quedó igual. Oh, yeah. even though we were off the air, his blood pressure remained normal. Yes. Great job, Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself because there are new people joining us and we were off the air for a little while. Tell us about yourself. Okay. Mi nombre es Freddy Peralta. Yo soy nativo de la República Dominicana, una isla caribeña. My name is Freddy Peralta. I was born in the Dominican Republic, an island in the Caribbean. Yes, I am 62 years old. All right, you're 62. So for 31 years, I was taking uh, high blood pressure medicine. Mm -hmm. Now I'm so happy that, you know, I say goodbye to that, you know, February the 7th of right. this year. How did it happen? Thank to you. Well, I you're welcome. Yes. All right. Tell the audience what happened. Lo que yo hice para la gente que habla español. This is what I did for those who speak Spanish. Primero que yo uh, hablé con, con usted. After I spoke with Dr. Cooper. Y usted me indicó el programa. And then she indicated the program. Que ofrece el centro 
de prevención. That we offer estamos. here at the Cooper Wellness Center, right here where we are recording right now. Y en ese programa, fundamentalmente, son tres cosas. Educación. In this program, there are basically three things. Education. Ejercicios. Exercise. Nutrición. And nutrition. Con esos tres elementos, usted entra dentro de un estilo de vida diferente, lifestyle different. Yeah, with these three elements, then you enter a new lifestyle. Ahora, una pregunta, doctora, ya que tengo All aquí right. la oportunidad. He's going to ask me a question. Go ahead, Freddy. Cuando se dice que cuando uno tiene con la edad, la el número de la presión va a ser un poquito más alto. Yeah, so they say that with age, the blood pressure will be a little higher. Eso es cierto. Yes, that's true. This is really true. So usually, I gave you the stages for high blood pressure. However, for the older patients, then we allow for a little higher blood pressure. So you are, you're correct, Freddie. Oh, okay. So okay. as you age, the blood pressure will go up. Now, we usually don't like to lower too fast an elderly patient's blood pressure because then they'll become dizzy and weak, and then they could have a... A uh, syncopal episode, a uh, fainting spell, which we do not want to have. Anything you want to tell me? Tell us, Freddie, what is your diet like right now? What are you eating now? In front of us, there are a lot of healthy foods. Okay. Right. So are you eating anything from here, Freddie? Everything I over here, that, you know, I see over here, I am, you know, I put on my... In your stomach, stomach. Yes. everything that's here, he's consuming. For example, you know, this is good for for my blood pressure. That's right. The lycopene. Lycopene. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, any uh, any of these beans and beans, lentils because yeah. you have good good fats here, yes. and of course, no cholesterol and lots of protein. Correct. Now behind us, we're going to talk about this that you're seeing here. Okay. So this is a blood vessel. Okay, this is normal, and then here, oops, so we lost her thing. Okay, there we go. So you can see two vessels there, one here and one there. Let's talk about what's happening there. You notice we have this name here, nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, what nitric oxide does, it dilates your blood, blood vessel, making it a little larger, and then the pressure inside will go down. What are the foods, the natural foods that can do that? So we have arugula. Arugula is just a leafy green vegetable. We have cilantro, lettuce, all these greens. All of these greens are great, beet greens. These are great uh, sources of nitric oxide. So if this is your blood, uh, your blood vessel, we have a smaller opening here, so the pressure here is higher. Now, when you consume all these foods, then what happens is that you increase your nitric oxide, the blood vessel will dilate, the blood pressure will lower, and then we'll have more blood going to the heart and to the brain. I think this is what happened to you because you're now consuming more leafy greens, right? Correct. More beets. Yeah. And right here, can you tell us what we have here, Freddie? Okay, well, you know, this is the, oh no, this is the one I love, you know. First, this is gonna be the one, and this is gonna be number two. This All right, is the one. what do you have here? This is the hibiscus. Hibiscus? You know, now I buy hibiscus, not only over here, I also go to the store. That's right. For the flowers. Right. And do my drink. So for you from the Caribbean, this is called, um, from Mexico it's called, Agua de Jamaica. Jamaica, in the Caribbean, is called sorrel. There is a chemical in here that is equivalent to angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. That's a long name, but blood pressure medicines that are in these groups are like lisinopril, captopril, zestrel. So consuming a glass of this per day could lower your blood pressure up to five points. And then what about the beet? Um. Well, you know, this is so good for me also, you know, for everyone who is having the high blood pressure because the compound I have, right. how it affects, you know. Also, you know, I found, you know, was talking about the nitro oxide. Yeah, nitric oxide, which also mm -hmm. is here in the beat. That is why we call this here heart beatality, because this will take care of your heart. This beet juice here that we have here at the Cooper Wellness Center, 
will help to lower your blood pressure. Go ahead. Uh, también yo me he dado cuenta que a través del ejercicio yo puedo también relajar un poquito las... Right. Also I've found that through exercise I can also relax the, um, the blood vessel wall and lower the, the blood pressure. Very good point because we know that exercise is medicine. For you to see the benefit of exercise, you really need to exercise about 30 minutes at least, 30 minutes a day, six days a week. How are you doing with your exercise, Freddie? Well, I do my exercise every day. Mm -hmm. So far today, twice. Twice. On this, on this I love, Sunday. I yeah. love that. <laughs> and you're going to stay healthy. I need healthy. to be ready for this program. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about stress? We all know that stress is a culprit for high blood pressure because with stress, the adrenaline and cortisol level will go up. And sustaining that level will cause the blood um, vessels to to be smaller, to contract, and therefore that will increase the blood pressure. So how are you doing with your stress management? Okay, well, first I pray, you know. Very good, meditation. Meditation, mm -hmm. I pray, you know, I um, listen to music. Music, very mm -hmm. relaxing. You say that if you listen just 20 minutes of music a day, you get some points down. Right? There you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. I dance also, you know. Dancing, that's I exercise, dance. that's going to increase yes. the endorphins, that's going to relax you and blood pressure will go down. Correct. What I else do you do? I also like to get in touch with nature. Nature. Nature, yes. Nature, very you know, good. When you see these uh, birds singing, mm -hmm. the trees, the flowers, you know, it's, that's it's, relaxing. it's about points, you know, two points is mm -hmm. good, three points is mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. It make a difference between one stage and the other. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So you're watching Get Health with Dr. Cooper and we're discussing hypertension. We're looking at the story of Freddie, how after 31 years of blood pressure medication, he was able to lower the blood pressure, then got off his medication. We want to motivate you. We want to stimulate you as well for you to change lifestyle. It is not easy to change habits that you have cultivated for 50 years, 20 years. However, it is not impossible. You have listened to uh, Freddie and you know that's not impossible. We're going to take a short break and we're going to come back with high blood pressure, the silent killer. Dr. Donna Cooper invites you to connect with us. Like us and share our social media networks. You can watch repeat programs of our shows anytime on Vimeo. Find us on our website at drdonnacooper.com. Yes, Pauline, I realized we were cut off for a while. We had problem with the internet, but we're back on. We're going to stay on for a couple of minutes. We'll do some recap for those who missed it. I want to welcome Agnes Day. You're always with us. Um, welcome. Please share and like Mini Carnes. Thank you for your dedication. Please share and like um, Sandra. Dr. Sandra, thank you for watching us. Marcia, Rosalinda, my office manager, thank you so much. Please share and like her page. Pat Pinnock, I don't know where you're watching from. Thank you. Share and like Beth Beal, I don't know where you're watching from. Marvin, thank you so much for watching. Share and like, we're discussing high blood pressure, the silent killer. 100 million people in the United States alone with high blood pressure. High blood pressure is the leading causes of heart failure, stroke, kidney failure, and even death. Um, we know that if you're placed on high blood pressure medication, this is not a lifetime sentence. You can become like Freddie, who was on high blood pressure medication for 31 years, but after he has discovered food is medicine, and how to manage his stress and how to exercise, he's now off all medication and he's doing very well. So you can do the same. Joy Marshall, thank you for joining. Rose Dancer, thank you so much. Remember to put where you're watching from. Remember to like and share the page because I do believe this information is vital. If you have not checked your blood pressure in the last 
six months, make sure you get your blood pressure checked. Now, what should be your number? Your number should be below 140. Ideally though, below 120, because in the range of 120 to 139, you're pre-hypertensive. You don't want to be pre, you want to be normal. For me, my blood pressure is in the one teens. Now, how can you change your lifestyle? What can you do naturally to lower your blood pressure and then get off your medication or to stay healthy? One of the things that you must do is meditation. Scientists have realized that patients who meditate, patients who have that connection with the divine, tend to live 10 years longer. Connecting, having hope and happiness will lower your blood pressure, put you in a state of relaxation, and that will not only lower blood pressure, but will be good for obesity, for diabetes, and for many other diseases. All right, so stress management is absolutely important and connecting is important. Having a wonderful relationship with your family, that is so vital. And of course, nutrition. Nutrition is the number one risk factor for diseases. Then nutrition is also your medicine. On my table right now, I have fantastic healthy foods that I really want you to, um, to pay attention to. Many people believe that when you change your meals, then if you become mostly a plant-based, then you're gonna be protein deficient. That is not so. So on this side here, I have sources for good healthy protein. Here I have black beans. One cup of black bean will provide you with about 40 grams of protein. How many grams of protein do you need? Well, if you're average size male, you need about 60 grams of protein. Average size female, about 45 grams. I have black beans, I have lentils, different colors lentils. I have chickpea, I have nuts and seeds. All these will give you significant amount of protein, fiber, vitamins, nutrients, and everything that your body needs to stay healthy. I have on this side, fruits and vegetables here you have nitric oxide in some of these vegetables which will dilate your blood pressure your blood vessel and lower your blood pressure there are fiber leucopenes lycopenes there's so many different nutrients and vitamins right here that will not only lower your blood pressure but will help you lower your weight now Scientists believe that if you were to lower your weight about 7 to 10%, if you're overweight and you reduce your weight 7 to 10%, that will significantly lower your blood pressure, lower your sugar, lower your risk for fatty liver as well. Now I have here um, fantastic nutritional juices are sold here at Cooper Wellness Center. I have heart beatality. We just discussed that in beets we have nitric oxide. Nitric oxide will open your blood vessel, dilate the blood vessel, and then lower your blood pressure. I have here um, hibiscus chia goodness. This is made from hibiscus flowers. In Jamaica we call this sorrel. In Mexico, it is called uh, Agua de Jamaica. Very, very good for lowering blood pressure. Actually, we believe that this um, hibiscus flower has a chemical that is equivalent to a blood pressure group of medication that we call ACE inhibitors, angiotensin converting enzyme reductase inhibitors. And these are your lisinopril, your zestril, your benazepril. So this here is equivalent to taking 10 milligrams of those medication. Let's look here. In the earlier section of our show, we discuss that in these green leafy vegetables here, arugula, cilantro, uh, lettuce, basil, beet greens all here there is a chemical that is called nitric oxide this is what it it does in your body so this is your blood vessel this is the wall of the blood vessel here and this is the lumen so the blood flows through here 
the smaller the lumen, the higher the blood pressure. So therefore, with the nitric oxide from these vegetables, what happens is that we have relaxation of the wall. You can see the thinning of the wall here. The lumen now has increased in size, and therefore there's more space for the blood. The blood pressure is lowered. So this here is very important. So listen. If you want to lower your blood pressure naturally, then make sure that in your pantry, in your refrigerator, you have all of these vegetables and all that I have here on my table. Hypertension, as I say, is a silent killer, but you do not have to die from high blood pressure. There are certain things you can do. Let's list what you need to do as of today. But before I list that, let me take the time to welcome some people that have joined me. Paula Chang, Joseph Caparuso, Dr. Caparuso, welcome. Manuel Sanchez, and all of you, I'd like you to share and like the page. Because remember that here at Get Health with Dr. Cooper, I want to empower you to use lifestyle modification to live a healthier life. And remember, high blood pressure doesn't have to take your life. You don't have to have a stroke from high blood pressure if you know what you need to do. First, you need to manage your stress well. Find a way to relax. Go for a walk. Call a friend. Go for hiking. Relaxation is important. Exercise. Exercise will increase your endorphins, will put you to a state of relaxation. That will lower your blood pressure. If you drink coffee, consider decreasing or change to decaf because coffee is a stimulant. It will increase the work of the heart and will cause your blood pressure to go up. Lose weight. If you're overweight, lose weight because patients who are overweight tend to have more blood volume. They tend to have more resistance and therefore the blood pressure will be higher. Those that lose 7 to 10% of their body weight will significantly drop their blood pressure by 7 to 10 points. All right? What else you need to do? Of course, you need enough rest. If you do not rest, you can try this. Stay up all night, then check the blood pressure the following day. You're going to realize the blood pressure is going to be a couple of points higher. When you're stressed, with lack of uh, sleep and rest, the body will produce hormones, adrenaline. These will then put you in a state of anxiety, a state of flight and fight. Blood pressure will be high. If that is sustained, you will have high blood pressure. That could lead to heart disease. So rest is important, drink enough water, and make sure you're staying away from fat and cholesterol. And most importantly, remember, there's always hope. Trust in God is very important. So as I leave you, I want you to remember Freddie Peralta's story that after 31 years of high blood pressure medication, he became healthier by changing lifestyle and he's now medication free. You can do the same. There is always hope. So remember to continue watching share like the page and remember that i have a couple of books on the market 14 days to amazing health which will give you step-by-step -step guide and how to change the lifestyle and then get healthy for life will give you nine secret pillars of health which could help you as you walk your way to amazing health and longevity i'd like you to share and remember that God wants you to be healthy. He says in 3 John 2 that, Beloved, I wish above all that you may prosper and be in good health. So God bless you, and I'll see you next week, same time. And remember, like and share the page and subscribe. See you then. Bye-bye. This broadcast was sponsored by Cooper Wellness Center and Faithful Path International Ministries. For more information on how to become a patient or a sponsor, please contact us at 1-844-343-8935 or visit our website www.cooperwellnesscenter.com.